With so many new details revealed from the Arc 2 trailer and primarily the page on Steam, we can now combine our knowledge of Arc 1's story with this new information to get a fairly clear idea about what Arc 2 is going to be like, and which characters might show up. Hey everyone, my name is Ned, and today I'm going to talk about the possibility that we could get any of the main characters from Arc 1 in Arc 2. I mean, we're talking people like Diana Altaris, John Dakea, Lee Mei Yin, and so on. But also, I'm going to talk a little bit about what Santiago's goals are now that we know he's trying to protect his daughter from two things that almost seem futile. However, before we get into all that, do me a favor and smash that like button while subscribing so you don't miss any of my uploads. Alright, so what's going on here exactly? Can anyone that was in the system really come back? To answer that question, we need to look back to Arc 1, Survival Evolved. In the Arc universe, human brains have what are called engramic matrices, which store their memories, personality, all that, and it can basically be harvested long after they're dead. I mean, Mei Yin was literally from the ancient Three Kingdoms era during the Yellow Turban Rebellion. Loads of these engramic matrices were harvested and stored in both the Ark's systems, remember those space stations that orbit Earth, and in the Genesis colony ship. Long story short, if you don't know Ark 1's story, the Arcs eventually were sent into space to orbit while the Earth was basically destroyed, and the colony ship yeeted itself as far away from Earth as possible. But because the database of matrices were stored on both the Arcs and the colony ship, that means probably the colony ship has the same minds that the Arcs were able to put into survivors over there. So yes, probably a different version of both Mei Yin, Diana, and so on are on a rat. The only difference should be that these versions don't have the memories of all their adventures over on the Arcs. Mei Yin's hatred for Nerva, her memories of Wu Tsui, her heartbreaking loss on aberration and near defeat on extinction. Diana's whole tech bomb incident, the tech village, any knowledge of aberration at all, not to mention John Dakea and Raya's relationship, Nerva's knowledge of what he did on the island, all of these stories and events forgotten by the people who actually caused them. So we know the ship probably has all these engramic matrices at least, and perhaps even most if not all of those matrices actually imported into human bodies, thus people on a rat. But how might we see this in Arc 2? Well, there's a few scenarios and paths for the writers to take with this. Let's quickly first read over what the Steam page has to say. Suddenly awakened on a strange, primal world filled with dinosaurs and humans struggling for dominance, you must piece together the history of how you arrived there, team up with legendary heroes, and confront powerful dark forces seeking to control the fate of all life. There is so much to unpack here, so let's start with the fact that we're going to have to once again piece together the history of how we arrived in this game. Sound familiar? Yeah, yeah, it kind of does. This gives us a hint that they may end up going with a combination of the Explorer Note system and aspects of this next bit being that we will team up with legendary heroes. This implies some kind of story missions with the important and beloved main characters from Arc 1 that I mentioned at the beginning. Will we see John Dakea? What about the graduate students? Raya? I mean, there are so many questions unanswered here as to which legendary heroes they're referring to. And furthermore, does that include side characters within the story like Sasha from Scorched Earth or Halston and Kazuma from Aberration and Extinction? Again, we don't know, but legendary implies they are pretty damn important. We're going to be confronting powerful dark forces seeking to control the fate of all life. What does this sound like? Which character from Arc 1's story was obsessed with making everything go his way and bending all life to his will? Well, yes, of course, Sir Edmund Rockwell, but like I said in the last lore video, there is no freaking way that they're gonna have Rockwell come in as a villain for the, what, I, I've, I've literally lost count at this point, just how many times he's come back. It's getting really stale. Please, Wildcard, write a new villain. Thank you. But anyway, this villain is going to be trying to take over a rat at the very least, and one way I can see them easily doing that is by using tech. I've seen a lot of theories that Santiago is going to be on a mission to, well, first protect his daughter, but second, destroy all tech or at least deactivate it or make it uh, unusable. This would make a lot of sense given his character. I mean, he's seen, you know, on an intergalactic scale just what the hell element and by extension tech is capable of, 
And if I were him and had been respawned again multiple times, I too would want to <laughs> destroy that shit. And now that he has a daughter, whether she's, you know, an adopted clone or not, he probably wants to protect her that much more. And one of the best ways to do that is to stop Element from getting in the wrong hands, i.e. Rockwell 2.0. If we take a look back at the Steam page, under the Epic Story subheader, we see that we're going to be experiencing what should be a pretty long story with, again, legendary hero Santiago while he's protecting his daughter Mika from, and this part is important, the ghosts of the ancient past and visions of a new future. So the wording is peculiar here. He's trying to both protect her from the ghosts of an ancient past, which we'll get into in a second, but also visions of a new future. This implies that Santiago just wants to be stuck in the Stone Age with Mika and keep away ghosts of the past, which if we take literally as ghosts, probably homo deus, like a few of you pointed out in the comment section. And at the same time, he also wants to keep Mika away from technological progress, which I think refers to the visions of some new future. I think Santiago may be one of the only characters to have the insight that technology always ends up being used for greed, power, and the dominance of others at some point, and thus protecting his daughter from all of that seems like it's gonna be pretty hard. I mean, we know the ship crashed on the planet, so there's gotta be at least a load of element seeping into the soil, along with countless tech weapons, tools, machines, creatures maybe even. And not everyone has Santiago's whole return to caveman vision. So we may be fighting quite the difficult battle when we team up with Santiago. But you know what isn't afraid of using high-end technology? G-Portal. Are you looking for your own ARC server or a server for another game? Well, look no further. G-Portal is a great server provider that has fast, well-performing servers, incredibly responsive support, and great pricing options as well. If you're looking to avoid the hassle of setting up and configuring your own ARC server, go ahead and use my referral link in the description to get your own G-Portal server today and receive a 10% discount on G-Portal servers while helping to support me as a creator at the same time. And of course, thank you to G-Portal for sponsoring this video. Now to get back to our legendary heroes, it may be that Santiago's goal, if it aligns with the rest, is actually something that can be pulled off successfully with enough people. I mean, come on, you combine Diana, Mei Yin, John Dakea, Raya, and probably a load of others, maybe even Nerva? All united with the same goal that Santiago has, and you might actually be able to cleanse Element from a rat and keep things primitive. But we'll have to see. I mean, first, we don't know if the others would be interested in doing that. Some of them probably want the conveniences of better technology, so maybe that's going to be an important aspect of the story. That some characters aren't entirely aligned with Santiago, at least assuming they team up in the first place. But you know, what is something that I'm sure probably a few of you thought about when Santiago mentioned legendary heroes is, what about Helena? And speaking of legendary people in general, Rockwell was obviously really important. Will we see either Helena or Rockwell on Narat? Maybe. A very talented artist by the name of Velico has drawn quite a few interpretations of what a kind of like a regular Rockwell clone might actually look like. They are really cool. I definitely recommend checking them out. I just really hope we don't fight the guy again because like I said, it's getting kind of stale. But that's about all I have to say for now. Let me know in the comment section which legendary heroes you think we'll see in Arc 2 and who might be the villain or even if, you know, we're going to see Rockwell or Helena again. You know, for me personally, the idea that we're going to see and possibly even interact with some of the fan favorite characters from the past is so exciting and I really hope that I'm right in thinking this is what Arc 2 is going to have. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you liked it, go ahead and smash that like button, subscribe for more content, and share this video around. But yeah, thanks again, and I'll talk to you in the next video. Good luck, survivors.